Good morning, Unity community. So grateful for a chance to share a Sunday experience with you. I'm Reverend Linda Martella Witset, and I'm here with my daughter and co-author Alicia Witset. Together, we wrote a book entitled This Life is Yours, Discover Your Power, Claim Your Wholeness, and Heal Your Life. We'd like to share some of the themes from our message this morning. So before the pandemic, I traveled quite a bit, and one of my favorite locations was a riding at anywhere that had a beach. Uh, I did that for one of my last trips. Uh, I brought a brand new hand raiser along with me because I knew I needed to take care of that before I went to the beach. So uh, I lathered up, I ran the razor up my leg, and as I like to do, I looked closely to make sure that I had gotten everything. Well, lo and behold, the hair was still on my leg and none of it was on the razor. So I thought something must be wrong with this razor. I know I'll try it in a different location. Now there's a logical thought, right? (laughs) (laughs) So, but that's what I did. And of course it didn't work there either. And so I gave up. I thought uh, I need a new razor. I uh, cleaned up, I went down to the desk and they gave me a fresh one. Then I finished the job and when I was cleaning up and I was drying off, my baby toe stung, it just felt sore. It gave me a moment of pause. And right then I had an awareness, a remembrance. The head of the razor had fallen off and I had reattached it. Perhaps I had attached it upside down. (laughs) Any of you kind of were ahead of me and and figured that out? Well, trying to fix something we think is broken, well, maybe it's not broken. Maybe it's our thinking that's upside down. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of a a little show you might be familiar with called Stranger Things. Um, And in Stranger Things, there's the upside down, which is pretty much the opposite world that people go to get lost in. Now think about that. Think about getting lost in your upside down thoughts. And what a, what a statement that is. (laughs) Well, co-founder of Unity, Charles Fillmore, he wrote a lot about thoughts and about how we work with thoughts. And he said, of course, thoughts are things and they have real effects. We've all noticed it, haven't we? But the effects of any thought depends really upon its emotional intensity You know, the ones that really pop and have effects, and they also uh, are determined by how strongly we feel about them, and then that we repeat it again and again and again. And as we know, a thought we think again and again and again becomes a belief, and a belief becomes solidified in our experience. So we thought we'd like to share about like the big upside down thought that most of us have when we think about healing. In our book, This Life is Yours, we discuss some of the primary thoughts that uh, could be perceived to be missing, wrong, or broken. Uh, So one of the biggest beliefs would be, I'm only human. And humanity, as we know, is fundamentally broken and fallen and looking toward an outside or other than source to have all of the answers and to solve the problems, right? We say to ourselves, I'm powerless, only God can heal me. Mm -hmm. So the core religious beliefs that we've been given, we've been given that message starting at a very early age. We're getting those from our churches, our communities, our families, our schools. And when you think about that, this is that collective consciousness Mm -hmm. that says something is broken about you. So Imagine being so little and getting that message reinforced to you. It's kind of hard to to see yourself outside of that circumstance, correct? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, you know, we, we tend to think, well, I don't believe that anymore. I mean, we know we're in a unity community. We, sit, we, we know we don't believe that anymore. The challenge is that so much of it is subliminal. So much of it is below the surface of our even of our awareness. And we find ourselves saying things that are part of that 
original messaging um, that we say we don't believe, and yet somehow we sort of confuse ourselves, you know? So it's not as harmless as we would think, even though we say, well, I'm well beyond that idea. You know what I'm saying? What happens is systemically, uh, why it's called collective consciousness, is that it sets us up to imagine God to be a deity, right? A superhuman personality that we need to fix us and to save us, right? If we're broken and fallen, we need God as a fixer. And what happens is we start interpreting the things that happen to us either as a reward or a punishment from that deity. Moreover, it plays out in our social systems, right? The police system, we're seeing the, the troubles with that nowadays. Our justice system, our politics and governance all have something built in around a belief that inherently something is wrong with humanity. Something is fundamentally missing, wrong, or broken about humans. Totally upside down. <laughs> and when we have to look at that external source as that place of power, you know, it makes me think about doing group projects in school and how you always had that one person that was ready to be the leader. They were ready to take charge of the group. You had the other people that maybe weren't as interested in even participating. They were just along for the ride to get that good grade. So what happens if you then turn in an assignment and the grade is not what you thought it was going to be, who gets the blame? Who gets to take credit for that? Well, the blame is all going to go back on that group leader, right? And that's what we're looking at when we are, um, when we're looking to a God, to an external God. We're looking for somebody who's going to take the blame, let me off the hook <laughs> for all of it. So in a way, that feels great. <laughs> but on the other end, it means exactly what we said before, I'm powerless. And when you, when you put that into your heart, I am powerless. Mm. That doesn't feel good. That doesn't, that doesn't um, make me feel the way I, I want to see myself in this world. It doesn't feel real. Either. Right. We know somehow we know that can't be right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So when we have this belief that God has to heal us, we start to believe unknowingly in a conditional God. Now, why do I say that? Because who does God heal and when? I mean, we notice, don't we all notice that some things that we deal with heal and other things don't heal or they heal at different times. And sometimes it takes a lot to get to healing. And some people heal sometimes and some people die of the same things that somebody else just healed from. You know what I'm saying? It's as if we believe in a God that has preferences or favorites or a God that is capricious or calculating or even cruel. And, and we, as if God acts like a schoolyard bully, right? And I have to get on his good side and you know, he's a he, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or if I follow a plan that somebody tells me is God's plan for me, then maybe I'll be all right. So all the conditions, you hear them? If I gather enough prayer warriors around me, then God's actually going to get the attention, you know, get attention on it for me. Or if I suffer sufficiently or long enough, you know where we're going. You see, you see the potential. These are just some of the ways that the collective consciousness points to the way it works. Totally, in our opinion, upside down. Yeah. So when you're thinking about it as, as this conditional God, again, it's saying that everything you need to do, it requires this action outside of who you just are on your own, right? Mm. It, it requires you to, to be called to a greater purpose, to be um, changing some mm. aspect about yourself, to be worthy, to be deemed oh, worthy, to be right? Worthy. So what's the right side thinking about that is, well, I'm 100% human, yes, but I'm also 100% divine. And divinity is your natural right. You are whole and complete outside of your circumstances. Yes. And you're fully loaded <laughs> with these spiritual capacities, these, these tools that you have uh, to make your life what you want it to look like but you have the power, you're in control of that. And I think that 
the part of that upside down thinking in that is that it's hard to step into your power. It's hard to claim I'm divine. It doesn't sound natural because of those messages that we've been receiving. So when I do stand in my power and I recognize my wholeness outside of any circumstance, what, what comes out of that? What's next for me? Yes. And lest you might be thinking that, well, we're talking about leaving God out of this. No, God is our nature. Divinity is our nature. So that right side is that God is the principle of wholeness, divine life itself, right? So Myrtle Fillmore said, God is not a person, but a principle and not a cold hearted principle like mathematics, but the life principle, the love principle, the wisdom principle. You hear it? All the spiritual software that we need, Mm -hmm. all of our capacities, right? So what do we do on the right side of this healing uh, um, idea is we take hold of principle. And that's the teaching. And we see when we do that, that God is not a deity that acts, that heals us, so to speak, right? Understand, God is not a deity that heals. No, God is the principle by which I heal. So when Alicia talked about I'm in charge or I have the power within me and I'm I'm not powerless, I'm in control in that sense. What we're saying is we, we, I take hold of that principle of life and I embody it by the actions that I take and by the thoughts that I think. I heal this way. I heal in the moment of and to the degree that I realize the principle of wholeness is what I am, right? Jesus said it this way to the people who came to him for healing. Take up your bed and walk. If Jesus wasn't claiming to heal anybody when he said that. He's not saying, "Lift your, take up your bed, I'll heal you. No, he's like, take up your bed, take up your crutch and go, live, live fully. He was reminding them that the power was in them. You take it up. He's not saying, let somebody stronger than you come and carry your bed for you. No, you take that bed up and you walk. I mean, this is powerful. This is the, where the power to heal is. I heal as I realize I am 100% human and 100% divine. I am whole, which means I am undivided. I am intact to heal is to claim wholeness. So what changes in your experience when you claim that wholeness? I remember auditioning for a show. It was for a summer dinner theater. And I was so nervous and I had prepared really hard and I was in a big room full of over a hundred others who were auditioning as well. And they called me up into this group and lined us up in front of everyone else in the room and started whispering about us. And as I looked around and I looked at the other people standing next to me, my confidence started to fade a little bit. And in my mind, I was thinking, I don't belong up here. And then I locked eyes (laughs) with the director and they whispered one more thing. And then they asked me to sit down. The second I went back and sat down, they called and said that that final group standing up was the group that was going to be going to the summer dinner theater. So I was one slot away because I doubted myself. That was how I internalized it. Now, the next year, when I did go and auditioned and made the group, I talked to my director about almost getting to go the previous year. And he said, you weren't ready. You weren't ready. And they felt they could feel that doubt. So that's not saying that that others don't see your potential. It was me who didn't see my potential, who didn't see my worthiness, who didn't feel whole, who didn't feel like a complete package that they were looking for. That's what emulated off of me. And that was a big, big wake up call for me. So when I think about claiming your wholeness, despite your circumstances, it's that it's, I show up I choose how I show up and what others see of me is that belief 
it's that, that knowledge that I can never be separate from that wholeness, that there's nothing wrong, missing or broken about Mm. me. And that I have choices. I, I have possibilities that open up for me when I can recognize that, when I can claim that in this world. Yep. Yep. Wow. That's really um, clear example of how much of an inside job healing is. Yes. That because, you know, what happened there? Some deity didn't zing Alicia and say, believe in yourself, believe in yourself. No, she came to that. That's called spiritual realization in a moment of need. And that's doing what we're meant to do. When Jesus said, we're the light of the world, it's our ability to be able to in to internalize, to activate, and to then express the very qualities within us that are divine. So this is how we heal. And um, we hope you will pick up uh, our copy of our book, check out some of the tools that we include in this book for healing. And we want to see you discover your power, claim your wholeness, and heal your your life. life. That's right. (laughs) Well, let's take a few minutes for meditation now. So turn with us as we, uh, as we close our eyes together. Take a few deep and refreshing breaths. For here in this moment, we take all that we have shared about, listened to, and thought about this morning. And we clear our minds of all of it for just a few moments to be fully and utterly present. With each breath, we deepen our slowing down. We deepen our sense of openness to the truth within the message. We slow down enough to open our minds and our hearts to the truth as we comprehend it. For we know intuitively, don't we, that the messages we've been given about a fallen world or about having fundamentally something missing, wrong, or broken, it plays out in ways that can be torturous for us inside of our own mind. Thoughts of unworthiness, thoughts of never being good enough, not having enough credentials, and all the ways that it plays out. And yet we are 100% divine. And here and now is where we look to the source of our divinity, the very power that God is, that we can sense within us and all around us. And we invite ourselves into the integration of our divinity and our humanity as we sit in a moment of silence where we can say, I am divine. I am divine. I am 100% human and 100% divine. I am a divine human. That means that I am whole, that all that I need to live my life is within me, that all the, the power that is, is the power that I have access to in order to live my life. Hmm.
And so as we settle into this as the truth, uh, let me read to you an affirmation from power, an affirmation for power. And pay attention to your own power center at the throat chakra and speak these words silently, repeat them to yourself. I am the commander of my mind. Like a laser beam of light that cuts through steel, I concentrate attention on what is most important right now. For all that is unfinished or uncertain, spiritual power is required. I am master of my mind and my mood. I practice self-mastery, knowing when to speak up, knowing when to be quiet. When I do speak, I declare what is true, what is clarifying, what is helpful. I am a demonstration of spiritual power. And so it is. Gently open your eyes again. So it's not as if we will never have these upside down thoughts again, right? But our spiritual practice and healing itself is a continual loop. It's not ending. And when we're reminded that this is an ongoing spiritual practice, that means we give ourselves the grace to, to make those little missteps, mm -hmm. to, to almost correct our thinking and be reminded that we are whole and that we have all we need within us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we and truly do then take up our bed and walk. We are the driver of our healing in that sense, right? So Alicia and I, we honor you, we bless you for any spark of insight that arises in your thoughts and feelings this morning, and for your courage to walk in your human experience with a growing awareness of your spiritual capacities. We appreciate your presence here with us, and we know this about you. You are divine. <laughs>